No, the other way. Better? Oh, okay. That works too. Okay. Oh, we're live. Hey. Yep, we're live. We okay. Hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome on in to another Monday live with the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. My wife, Sarah, is not joining us tonight. No, I'm not. And Will's just doing whatever the hell Will's doing. I don't really know. It's cool. He always I know we're waiting on uh, my whiskey den to finish. So, you know, because they got quite a barrel on there. So, hopefully they'll be done in a minute. I'm guessing yeah. something like that. We can go. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. It's all good. And obviously, it's a licorice. We got one of them at least. <laughs> we only let, let one ginger out at a time. <laughs> <laughs> too dangerous to let too many out. Oh, God. Well, you let Josh in the chat. I mean, you know, that is a lot there. He's still he's still shackled. So that's, that's true. Gretchen's got him held hostage that's in the right. closet. It's fine. So, you know, it's all good. Hey, Gretchen. Oh, God. Who else we got in the chat with us? I see Sugar Kitty. I see Brandon Wilson, Let's Scott see. Moody, Jerry Black, Ben Demon Hunter, Donald Rance. What's up, Ben? You got to listen to this, watch this commercial. But oh, my God, the freaking StreamYard commercials lately. I think that should be today's comment of the day should be StreamYard because that's what you guys should put all in the comments. Like Pee Wee Herman says, today's comment of the day is StreamYard. These ridiculous ads. That's what we're all paying for is ad after ad after ad of freaking StreamYard. StreamYard. Dear they, Lord. Are they paying you? That's no. Fine. We're paying them. We pay them 240 bucks a year to mm. use their to use their service. But you get like 10 cents from the commercial playing beforehand. So. Super. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Making that money back. Hey, Josh. Appreciate it. I'm just here for the ginger. Thanks. Appreciate it. Somebody's got to be. That's right. Mm. All right, so let's see who else is in the chat here. All right, we got Chris Beaton, Donald Ranch, got Gretchen. You know, she's holding Josh hostage, so we got that going. We just got Scott Moody, Mark JG, Tim the Sweet Tea. All right, Eric Evanson. What's up, Tim? Let's see, who else? You haven't seen Tim in a long time either. We haven't seen anybody. There's Bobby and Sam. Oh, geez. <laughs> it's Dino. dangerous now. Uh-oh. <laughs> Man, we let them loosen to the, up at the distillery. It'd be really I know, entertaining. I know. We got Brenna Wilson. They need to come visit again. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Travis Wallard's in here. There's Captain Make It Happen. Aaron Hardiman. All right. It's all good. So, if you guys don't know who Ired is, um, I'm guessing you've probably been under a fucking rock. But hey, you know, at this point, if you don't know and you watch Whiskey Tube on a regular basis, you know who Iron Root is. But just in case you don't, we got Robert here. He's going to tell you the story of the distillery, and then we're going to drink some really freaking awesome whiskey. So let's go with that. All right. Um, so we are a very tiny distillery. We're 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 still a tiny speck in the in the greater whiskey world. Um, but we've got we've been blessed to have a lot of people that like what we're doing. And uh, uh, again, Ginger's Ginger's got some magics from what I get told. So. Sam says to invite us there, bitches. Well, uh, Sam, you know. this is your official invite. Send me a time when you want to get back down to Texas, and we will we'll gladly have you and uh, show you around. And uh, again, we we'll probably find a hotel room too. So, <laughs> um, but uh, guys, so we started the Iron Road about six, a little over six years ago. We started first distillation was August 2014. So, uh, been around for just a again tiny amount of time in the whiskey world. Um, in the Texas whiskey world, I guess we've been around. You're for like a lot. you're We're like the old guard. You're one of the older ones at this but, point. Yeah, like what. Third or fourth oldest, it's gotta be something like that. These are the good ones. All right. <laughs> That's for sure. Some we don't want to talk oh, about. Man. There's a lot of really good uh, distilleries coming no, out. Just, just a ton of great ones here, no doubt. Uh, but yeah, so we, uh, my brother and I, don't come from distilling royalty or family or anything. We are all uh, taught by learning from others. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about the distilling industry is there's so many people willing to teach and give advice and take you under the wing. Uh, I know for us, we interned at a lot of different distilleries over the course of several years. Um, I mean, obviously Balcones guys helped us out a bunch early on, um, but probably the biggest influence to us was Hubert Germain Rabon, who's a, a master cognac distiller who moved out to California in the eighties. Him and his apprentice, Nancy Fraley, just kind of took us under the wing and showed us the, the weird and wacky ways of the French. And we kind of, yeah, kind of fell, fell in love with what, they do. Um, so for those of you who uh, have not hung out with French people on uh, any extended periods of time, mm -hmm. they're, they're very particular people. <laughs> um, 
they very much believe uh, the the winemakers and the distillers believe very much in terroir, which uh, translates to flavor of the land. But really, what it boils down to is that they believe that something should taste like it comes from a place. Texas whiskey should taste like Texas. I agree. Kentucky bourbon should taste like Kentucky. Cognac should taste like it comes from France. And so the thing that they challenged us with very early on was making a spirit that really tastes like it comes from Texas. And the question was with only, again, because back in 2014, Balcones had been around for six years, Garrison Balcones. So what does that even mean to make something that tastes like Texas? Uh, my brother and I kind of decided to kind of dig back into the history and go back to kind of the roots of, of the spirit of what we were making, which mm -hmm. obviously uh, corn is a big part of Texas and Texas historically is part of Mexico, which is where corn comes from. Good point. So that's why we decided to really dig into doing lots of things with corn. <laughs> um, so again, we've become, yeah, Canadians should taste like maple syrup. Uh, <laughs> and, and apologies. That's uh, right. <laughs> and apologies. God. That's awesome, Donald. Uh, it's true. It's definitely a true statement. I, I think, uh, Maple um, maple syrup finished crown, I think, should be a thing. Oh, it's not. God. Uh, <laughs> so, so awful. Uh, but oh, uh, Makes so, me cringe, that one. It's the worst whiskey's ever made. So Jonathan and I just kind of dug into to studying corn and trying to figure out, because there's tens of thousands of species of corn. I mean, you guys can Google it. There's literally corn of every color of the rainbow. There's rainbow-colored corns. Mm -hmm. um, and, yes, I have distilled rainbow-colored corn because – why, why the heck not exactly uh, why wouldn't you distill rainbow color i blame robert for going to other distillers and going what kind of corn for do you have what kind of browsers like why the hell do you want to know this usually the question i get i'm like because i'm interested to know they're like why do you even know about that i'm like oh iron root taught me about grain varietals they're like you're weird I'm like sorry don't they're worry like, people tell me that too um <laughs> So, but what we found out is that the corns, they actually taste really different from each other. Um, mm. the, not all corns the same. Again, it's one of those things that when you really think about it, well, again, when you look in the grape world and the wine world, yeah, Chardonnay and Merlot are very different things. Mm. Um, even though they're both wine and they're both made from grapes, that they still, that they taste very different from each other. And we've found that corn isn't quite as diverse, as, I would say, as grapes, but they are still pretty darn diverse. I would say so. I mean, you can get it. A duck, you know, a, a water, duck, a water <laughs> burger flavored. I mean, oh why my not? God. Spicy ketchup flavored. Oh god, I don't know. We, should, we do the best pairing with water burger. I mean, that could be an interesting iron root water burger combo. They are both Texas institutions? That seems like it should be a video. I think that's a good idea. Which which Texas distillery pairs best with water burger? It's a great plan. I like this plan a lot. Okay. We can de like definitely it. do that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I mean, so we dug into the corn, so we've become really well known for doing all these different varietals of corn, but my brother and I are very, we use, we use a lot of traditional French techniques from how we run our stills to using traditional, uh, old school pot stills to, <laughs> I love that. uh, to, to, uh, even just how we run the barrel warehouse. Uh, I think you're starting to hear a lot more about the term elevage which means to to raise spirits, which is very much individual barrel focused um, maturation. Because the French, the their industry is basically backwards from the United States where all the big giant labels all buy from small farmers. Uh, there's 6,000 distilleries in Cognac and only 128 labels, if that makes sense. It's kind of crazy. Um, well, you're the gingers of the corn from Frequency okay. Dead. Thank you very much, appreciate it. I don't know what currency that is. Whatever SEK is, I'm not sure. Hey, take it. I'll take it. Um, but we, as we as we kind of got into it, we just started really diving down the French techniques and kind of applying that in slightly different ways because the weather here is very different than France. But it's really helped us. Um, kind of last week. Yeah, <laughs> Jeez. It's, help, it's helped us manage <laughs> the uh, the maturation here because Texas again. Any of you have been here? Uh, it is it is quite hellish at times, mm -hmm. and we have very long summers. But Daniel says it's the ginger. Yeah. Hey, Daniel, how's it going? I'm going to tell Jonathan you said I was the ginger. Now <laughs> you're going to make him je jealous, Daniel. Be careful. 
Um, but yeah, so that's kind of oh, us in a nutshell. Uh, I'm just uh, French techniques using crazy corn to, to make some, some really fun whiskeys. I, we get asked all the time, do we do anything other than corn? Uh, we have distilled a lot of brandy. We've got single malt, Irish style whiskeys, rye whiskey, wheat whiskey. We've distilled a bunch of stuff because Jonathan, he, he is just a ginger, I agree. Um, he, he is a ginger with ADD, and so we do make a <laughs> lot of different things that at some point we'll start releasing some of these other crazy creations to the world, but for the moment, it's all, all about the corn. <sighs> God. Thanks, Trump Van. Appreciate it. <laughs> Somebody sent me a medal wants me really loud. <laughs> Clay. So, yeah. so I have been blathering on long enough. I think we need to get to the first drink. We need to drink. Yeah. It's very important at this point. It's the first day closing the counting cycle, so it means it's time to drink. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So uh -huh. what is up first? What? Well, you sent us some samples. Oh, I got a bottle here. It's all good. We get the esoteric. Yeah, and and instead of instead of uh, sending them to Matt, you actually sent them to me and Sarah this time because Matt always gets the samples. It's okay. I still share. It's fine. <laughs> the problem is when they get the samples, they can't read what's in it. That's the biggest problem. That's that's a personal problem. That's then, nice. He said there's good whiskey in it. This is readable. You know. This is true. Look at how nice it is. Even on a small screen, you can read that. But when we're doing it at the last minute, it's kind of hard. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Somebody oh, there, but, yeah, I guess there's a bazillion uh, wrenches in here tonight. That's true. There are a lot of wrenches in here. It's a good point. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. On our first live stream, we had issues in the chat. Oh, yeah, uh, that was fun. And we had no wrenches. Uh, from then on, mm -hmm. everybody that was in that chat that was behaving uh, automatically became a wrench. Pretty much. It's pretty much. <laughs> That's the if way anyone that can name that, you know, in, in fact, if anyone can name the person that said that at that time, I will send you a sample of some of the stuff tonight. If that, I think that that will be a good trivia question at the end of the night if you know the answer to that. I love that. That'll be a fun. All right. So tell us what Esoteric is. So Esoteric is one of our crazier releases. We only do it every couple of years. It's kind of where a lot of our experimental whiskeys get blended into. So this this guy, it's actually it's like a bastardized Solaris. So anyone who has infinity bottles at home, this is essentially our distillery infinity bottle, um, if that makes sense. So kind of what we do is we'll, we'll put a the very first time we ever did it, we put a blend of some of the experimental stuff together. Half of it got uh, bottled, the other half went back into barrel and continued aging. So it just kind of became a Solera. So this this can be a lot heavier oak than most of our stuff that's down at kind of 97 or below 100 below 100 proof um because it's got some six-year-old plus stuff in it which is a lot of fun so this guy now has wow, a little bit of green six. oaxacan corn wow. and it's got a caramel malted wheat in it and this year which is the third edition of it we've got a we blended in a bourbon that was made with some purple prairie barley which mm. purple prairie barley again for those of you we oh, really love purple corn so we we're like yeah purple barley sounds even even better Let's do that. Um, Ooh, we need to come try that to the distiller next time. Try some just that alone. That yeah. sounds interesting. For the, and for those of you, the liquor industry is really, it's full of what I like to call half truths and just flat out lies half the time. That's either mm -hmm. generally if someone's telling you something, it's one or the other. Um, but my favorite is the grain guys can be even more elaborate than some of the distillers. Oh, and really? so the grain guys, when we were asking them about this, and they found it in the United States from Montana all the way down to Texas. Um, but the only other place where they find it is uh, they found it in Egyptian tombs. Oh. And so the theory was that there was a camel train that made it all the way through Russia down through Montana. And I, I have a very hard time believing that that's what happened, but sure. Why not? It's such a great story yeah, though. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. You know, those camels are very, very, uh, yeah, very strong animals. Exactly. You know, ice, hmm. snow, the great sand in the desert, snow and ice, probably not so much. So Scott, we sent out esoteric. Uh, this would have been sent out in November. So I check uh, total lines and specs kind of around the state. If you're in Dallas, a lot of the independents in Dallas will get it, get it as well. Um, if not, we still have some bottles up at the distillery of esoteric as well. <laughs> Stash question. Gingers have a, a generic prescription to the truth. <laughs> 
I've heard I've heard such rumors. The camel train, it just sounds dirty. This is probably <laughs> a good point, Josh. Camels are already dirty, filthy animals to begin with. What do you expect? I mean, they spit on you. I mean, it's what it is. <laughs> this is so, spicy. This is uh, very much a cinnamon and a black pepper, uh, especially towards the finish and the finish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alex says his my son is a ginger. I so I guess full success in his future, right? Exactly, Alex. Totally. All I know is he, he will be very good at making whiskey. That's all I can say. <laughs> Scott's right. Just take a road trip to Denison. If you guys don't know, Denison's what eight miles from the Oklahoma border, is that right? Yeah, something like something that. Something like that, yeah. It's really close to the Oklahoma border. So that's all that's all you need to know. You gotta go way the hell up there. Drive north until you see Oklahoma and hit the brakes. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, this guy's gonna have as a and you should be getting a lot more of those oak characteristics, that cinnamon, mm -hmm. clove, that pepper characteristics. Cause it is it it, it vast majority of corn. I mean, you're still talking we're rolling in that kind of ninety plus percent corn, and these yeah. other brands are gonna be kind of the the smaller amounts, but if you want to know what the exact uh, mash bill is, the answer is I don't actually know because we've now blended it three times. Mm -hmm. And my math, especially after we've been drinking, is ain't that great. So, oh, oh, that's that. hunting up top. That's the whiskey kitty. Good job, whiskey kitty. It's a good job, Weasley. The terrorist strikes behind you. That's right. For real. Cats are terrorists. Valid point. It's going to jump down on top of me. Just you, speaking of uh, whiskey kitties, you guys got one of your own. That's right. We do. That is Brandy, our uh, adopted kitty cat. She uh, she is very loud. and <laughs> yes, she is. During, during tours, <laughs> she likes to make sure that everybody knows she's there and gets all the pets. Uh, people are like, do you feed this cat? And it's like, no, she just constantly is talking to everybody. Yeah, I think your cat's the most vocal cat I've ever met, ever. Yeah, and the most friendly that actually wants to be pet. Like most cats, like nah, we won't be with people. Your cat wants to be pet all the time, constantly, and it's gotten worse. So my dad just <laughs> retired from a from a real job, so uh, we've now brought him on as the intern at the distillery. So <laughs> basically, he he's under Josh and Gretchen right now. So they've got a they've got a new employee to to educate mm. uh, for us, but. My dad likes to bring chicken with him, rotisserie chicken, oh, and gosh. gives it to So now she thinks everyone that walks into <laughs> her room should be giving her rotisserie chicken. Oh, my so. gosh. That's hysterical. Now she's going to be free for completely different reasons. Uh, I want to kind of go through some of these other photos that we have pulled. Uh, got a, you said that the, you're reworking the front of the distillery. So it's not going to look like this for much longer. Um I'll just go through some photos. That might be a fun way to do it. Uh, I got a photo of uh, behind the bar here. And then uh, the stills. And actually right behind the stills, you can guys can actually see the bar, the, this wall that we were just looking at. It's actually behind those. Robert was saying uh, these were the first barrels that got laid down. Let's see here. Some of these older barrels they have in there as well. Sorry, Violet is going crazy at the moment. She she just tell us some insane joke and she went nuts. All right. Shh. Uh, so I did see a question someone was asking when we're getting to Washington State. We are currently available in Washington State at Total Wine. So it's only a handful of, I mean, there's like four or five stores probably, but we have barely entered, we dipped our toe into Washington State. So. Yeah. Well, it's better than nothing, so that's always a plus. Sarah's not feeling well. She's having uh, some blood pressure issues. So until she gets uh, all of that stuff under control, she doesn't really want to drink. So uh, she really wanted to be here tonight. She really uh, loves Iron Root, but she uh, loves her health more. So we're getting that taken care of. Control, we hit both of those for you, Donald. We got Violet and Bacon Kitty, so you guys are good now. Are, we, are they playing oh. the bingo? 
I don't know what's going on with her. She's like playing some. She's like she just laid a ton of sugar. She's going crazy. Has to tell some joke. Oh yeah, you talk about that big barrel, that big cow. But that's yeah, a good that, idea. So that is actually it's a a fooder or tonneau, I guess, depending on what country. Uh, yeah, so we actually got that out of cognac, and that's where we're aging our our older brandies. So we've. So we actually came up with uh, we 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 got told early on someone told us that you would never be able to age a, a spirit in Texas longer than six years, mm. and Jonathan and I accepted that challenge and are, are currently working on um, pushing that boundary a little bit. So the the brandy that's currently in there is a six year old Chenin Blanc brandy that we still okay. uh, again traditional cognac style. It will probably get released right around 12 years old. I think will be the first wow. time we start releasing it. So, yeah. We've tasted it there. It's amazing as it is already. I can't even imagine another six years on it. Uh, so Liberty Lot License is, is it at Total Wine in Florida? It is. So good. You can find it there tomorrow. Perfect. Now, whether it's in stock is um, another question because yeah. I think Florida usually is pretty good about having it in stock right now. Well, <laughs> you guys recently have uh, been winning lots of fun awards, so your product, I'm sure, is flying off the shelves at a pace you weren't expecting. If you someone had told me three years ago that we would have been where we are right now, I don't one wouldn't have believed them and thought they were crazy. Um, but I also wish I had because then I would have been able to make a lot more whiskey and a lot more products. So yeah. we, we are ramping up. We are, we are increasing production, but it will be a few years before uh, you see that on the iron root side. Now we are going to be doing a few kind of really fun blending projects in the, the meantime, because what do board whiskey distillers do when they have, when they don't <laughs> have any of their own whiskey to blend, they start playing around with other people's stuff. So there you go. Uh, we're going to be uh, a little bit, I think probably in the next two months, we'll be releasing a fun blend of Texas whiskeys. It'll be cool. a blend of our stuff, Lone Elm and Balcones will be the first Ooh, blend. And that then sounds the good. The second one will actually have Still Austin in it. Awesome. Be really fun. Uh, Trey wants to know, is a single malt for sale at the distillery yet? Not yet. Uh, again, the single malt is another one of those projects that's a long-term project for us. I think the single malt... Just about four years old now. I think it'll probably be closer to seven when we actually release it. Um, again, we have one that's a a funky peated one that's really really fun. Like, we've got a number of single malts because we were playing around with, well, what 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 varietals of barley do we want to use? And uh, again, once you get Jonathan going down a track, he tends to play around a lot. So we tested that first couple of years. We tested a number of different versions of single malt. I think we finally got it narrow, narrowed down. Scott. And are you are you continually laying that down? Oh yeah, every year we lay down. We try to lay down eight to ten barrels of it every year. Okay. Um, so hopefully, at, at, when we start releasing it, it'll be we'll have a constant kind of flow of it coming out. Have I made cognac? Yeah, actually, Scott. Uh, one of the beautiful things is Dennis and his sister cities with Cognac. So hmm. over the years, I've formed some really good relationships with the uh, master distillers over in Cognac because they come over to Denison every like four or five years. And so I've actually got, got they actually put me up over in Cognac and I went over nice. and distilled there uh, a few, few years ago, went in for a few weeks and was distilling over there. So there is Cognac in Cognac that I distilled. And at some point, hopefully, I'll be able to get a, buy a bottle, a barrel of it from them. No, oh, that would be cool. Are you going to bring it here and age it then or just drink it? Just drink it, probably. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, no, I had a uh, – again, I've had a chance to still over in, in Cognac and down, went, ended up going down to Armagnac and distilling down there as well. Mm -hmm. right. Well, speaking of that, you want to get into the next one? The yeah, let's go. I think that seems like the logical Saints place Alley. to go. Ooh, there we go. Speaking of blending projects that we're doing. All right. That's right. We just have this. So is this even available to buy yet? So this will be released at the distillery in May along and it will be hitting nationwide in July or to either July or August, depending on when they release it. So okay. um so we're gonna be releasing three 
special blended projects called Saints Alley um, that we worked with for the whiskey tubers out there. Uh, we've made friends with Chris Trevino, the liquor hound, many, many years ago. And so he came and was helping us play around a lot in the warehouse. So um, the one that you have here is going to be called the Herald, which is going to be the, it's a blend of MGP and Iron Root that's finished in Armagnac casks. Okay. Um, then we'll have one that's a, that's killer that, um, again, on the next round, I'll be sending out samples of this. It's going to be a port and cognac finish um, one. And then we'll Ooh. also have a French rum uh, finish that we're doing. That as sounds well. like fun. All those sound fun. Right. Oh, that's unique. So this is ringing in at what? 53.5? Is that what, that's what? Yeah, it's 107 on proof. Okay. Yeah, it definitely tells you, hello, it's high proof. Yeah. It's got that high rye MGP uh, six-year-old on there. Yes. Okay. If you guys haven't seen Liquor Hound's channel, he's awesome. You should definitely check him. He's old school YouTuber. He's done this way before any of us have done this, and his collection is amazing. So check out Liquor, Liquor Hound's channel, and then hopefully in a couple months you can buy his uh, amazing whiskey here. So Someone is asking if Total Wine has exclusive rights for Iron Root out in California. They don't have exclusive rights. The broker that we use for outside of Texas, they they have a very good relationship with, so they tend to buy up large amounts of stuff from them. Um, again, I get asked by retailers all the time. Unfortunately, I don't have any direct control of 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 which stores get stuff outside mm. of Texas um, because that's the the brokers. That's the job. That's what he gets paid all his money for. But all right. So Benjamin wants to know: Robert make any special souvenir blankets? Thank you very much, Ben. You know, um, I don't personally make the souvenir blankets, but we have some very, very good fans that have been kind to me over the years and uh, gave my wife a very, very special souvenir blanket. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll just right. shout out to those guys. Benjamin. What's your price point looking at like this on this uh, on this guy? Um, so the, the port and cognac should be right at forty nine ninety nine, I believe. It'd be either forty nine or fifty four. Oh, okay. And then this guy should be right at fifty five to sixty, depending on the state. Not bad. Uh I like to think so, Eric. Um for sometimes we get um sometimes some barrels we definitely do have better context on getting exactly what we want. Mm. Um again especially when it comes to brandy barrels, a lot of times when you you're sourcing brands, especially like Armagnac, they sell off a lot of like eight year old Armagnac casks, which there, I, I will say there's a huge difference between 20 year old Armagnac and eight year old Armagnac. Sure. And for me, again, it's, it's not even worth sourcing the younger no, cast. Yeah. You really got to get some older casts to get some of that deeper kind of richer flavor profiles. I can confirm things that have been finished in Armagnac casks that we try there are freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you want that deep wood penetration so that you can then extract that when the heat comes in Texas and the and the cold comes in Texas. Oh, and we get that space. Uh, yeah. yeah. Again, and one of the big things to look for for me, and, and again, when you have relationships over there, you get to kind of specify things a little bit more. But it's also the region that the oak comes from is really important. For Armagnac, instead of getting a limousine oak that you would typically for the cognac, there is a Gascon oak that they get that comes from much closer to the Spanish border. And it is a different beast. And I absolutely love it. So again, when I'm looking for Armagnac cast, generally uh, what gets offered, well, they send me emails because they know what I like mm. now. Um, but it's going to be an Uni Blanc oh, or Baco 23. Baco 23 is my, probably my favorite Armagnac grape. Um, that with 20-year-old Gascon oak. And that's typically what we, we tend to go for. Nice. Um, do you have any PX? Sure. Right, we got stuff aging in PX right now. <clears throat> Again, that's we. As I mentioned earlier, my brother has his ADD. We have a lot of things aging. This hey, year, the what that mesquite bean thing. That's yeah, wild. the mesquite bean and whiskey is pretty crazy. It's good. It's just totally it's, different than else we ever had. He's fun. one of those that if you say this is an idea, he's like, okay, we can do that. And then I have these like three other variations we should try too. Yeah. <laughs> Saving any single bills for distillery sale on the 20th, we're all going up for. So, yeah. So what we do now with the single barrels uh, or for any special release, what, we, what we've what we chosen to do after the debacle last April 
in which case like the on we put things online and it sold out in about eight seconds and people didn't have had stuff in shopping carts and stuck there yeah. and it caused a little bit of chaos so we now about uh i think it's 70 percent will be ra will be random in the randomizer and 30 percent is sold on site for anyone who shows up so anyone who doesn't win one of our lotteries still has a chance to get the bottles they just if you make it to the distillery literally if you show up 30 or 40 minutes before we open typically you're still able to get a bottle um, and so yeah we you generally save anywhere from 40 to 70 bottles for for sale on site that day so what he's saying is you need to camp out overnight have a good time <laughs> you in the not, need to camp out overnight he's lying um, to you so right so yeah no I, I would say generally for each of the last special releases we've had people show up um even just a few minutes after we uh, 30, 40 minutes after we open, and we still had a few bottles left. So, um, well, I always try to reward people for making the journey that far north, if if I if it's all at all possible for me to do it. I don't think. Oh, he wants to know. He talked about the purple corn French oak, yet. Uh, so it's European oak, not French oak. So it's a slightly different. Uh, so it's Slovenian rather than uh, rather than French, which. Hmm, when you look good. at flavor profile for for that specific oak, it's gonna be it's not Hungarian, but it has some similar properties to Hungarian. But okay. if you're looking at uh, just looking at tannin levels, uh, you're looking at French oak. Typically, is gonna have the highest level of tannin. Okay. Uh, American oaks can be really high in vanillin and much lower in tannin, and so they're kind of opposite ends of the spectrum. And then the Slovenian and Hungarian oaks kind of fall in the middle of that. Um, Interesting. And then you have Mizanura, so, which is on the now we're even have more a class that's on oak. Yeah, it's you have to bring us like oak samples. And, check and then them you out. have new growth forest versus old growth no, forest, yeah. and how tight are the rings? I mean, there's there are a ton of different things that go into all the different barrel types. But yeah, the, so the barrel that we're releasing has been one of the favorites. Uh, it actually was up for tri barrel, so it's actually mm. the same age as the youngest cast that went into tri barrel. So we we had okay. for tri barrel we had seven barrels that we were selecting from and this guy was jonathan liked it more out of the blend than he liked it in the blend is the best way for me to put it so okay um it was better by itself than it was when we were some barrels don't like sharing sure. and so it's like great best single just barrels. To leave them alone. yeah absolutely so mark wants to know what's yeah we're doing boot camp and i are at well there's this you know pandemic thing when that ends when I would say we're my my hope would be to restart it up probably like February and be kind of the, so we, yeah. got, we got eleven months and counting. So like next February, mm -hmm. okay. So a while. All right. So Travis is going to be visiting Irish soon. Got to get some of that ginger juice <laughs> and a new hat since my puppy chewed up my iron. Ooh, Travis, it sucks. Ooh. Thanks for coming on, Robert, and cheers. Have some having some castor and harbinger. Thanks, Travis. Cheers. Sorry about your hat. That sucks. But I'm sure that, that can be remedied soon if you come visit them. <laughs> I, I feel camping. you on the puppy. I have a puppy, yeah. brand new puppy as well, and my hands are chewed up right now. So that'll do it. They're apparently in on a on a Crusader campout for the whiskey, though, so it's all good. Yeah, come on, let's party. What day is that that you're having the opening? The yeah, March twentieth will be. Oh, so like three weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. John wants to know: Are there any plans for alternative wood finishes now? Like Acacia, chestnut, cherry woods, or any other use of toasted maple staves. Been trying to talk um, Pierre Ferron and sending me some of their chestnut caps. Um, mm. The biggest issue that we've had, um, even just looking at testing and talking to some of the cooperages, the alternative woods tend to be they, they tend to leak a lot more, and hey, even with uh, I know Balcones when they tried the Texas post oak, they mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. that. It was. They it just doesn't seal the same way. Ah, um, that's a problem. That oak does, and so you lose a lot. Now, there are some hardwoods from South America that have performed a lot better. So mm. some stuff that they will age cachaca in, and I've been eyeing and talking to people about some of the cooperages down in Brazil to try to get get a hold of some of those casks. Um, we'll see how successful I am, um, but. That teak wood's pretty, there's, pretty cool. There's been some, we, we've been, that's something that we are working on and always trying to do. It's cool. Again, because when we first started, we had the idea of the mesquite wood and some of the, some of the other woods here in the U.S. 
and they just they do not hold spirit the same way. Yeah. No. Especially when you have the extreme weather of Texas. If you mm-hmm. had more moderate weather, it's a little bit easier. Okay. But they Texas puts a ton of pressure on the spirit, so it tends to leak a lot worse. Yeah, that's a serious problem. Leaky whiskey on the floor is bad for everyone. Mm-hmm. Say hi to Matt, ADHD whiskey. How's it going? All righty. Okay. Emberana wood? I don't Amber Honor Wood, yeah, yes. that's a, that's one of the Brazilian. Oh, it was one Brazilian ones. Okay. Yeah, I had a, I've had some rum, that's, rum and cachaça that's been aged in those. Hmm. So how was it? Was it pretty good. It was like totally. It's different. crazy. It's crazy. Uh, I have to, it has again. You get a lot more like those sandalwood, sandalwood okay. type notes and stuff like that out of it. Um, uh, Teak wood is. I know. Have you tried the new uh, whistle pig? The Magellan. I have not tried Magellan. Oh, we'll okay. fix that tonight. So, um, yeah, that one is, they finished that in teak with That's what I'm saying. It mm-hmm. might be something cool. See what it tastes mm-hmm. like and see what you think. I'll grab it while you talk to them. You can try yeah, it. It's actually quite enjoyable. It oh, was you think of it? one of the better uh, of the last couple of uh, Black Prince or the, uh, um, what is it called? Releases. Whistle Pig releases. Boss Hog. Yeah. That's the one, Boss Hog. Thank you. I say Black, Black Prince. Prince so my favorite one so far. I, I will say that. Which one was? The Black Prince. Yeah, same. Uh, that's That was the best one that they did. It was really, really tasty stuff. Everything since then has been like, oh, 500? Really? Okay. <laughs> uh, do we use beeswax to seal leaks? Um, not... Normally, a lot of times, actually, what we'll do when we have leaks, they tend to come from like pinhole leaks from from bugs and stuff. What we'll do is we'll actually drill into the drill into the the leak, and then we'll put a. There's basically different wood that you can actually stick in there and kind of hammer in that helps kind of plug the leak. They're like little barrel plugs. Um, so you see some will use cedar. Some distillers just use toothpicks to do it. Um, so that's typically when we're having issues. That's more. Um, but there are there are a number of distillers that use beeswax in order to help kind of plug leaks, especially any leaks along the head where you can't do that too. That would be a, a better solution. Okay, so Jason's eyeball the YouTubies, and I'm afraid to open it because I don't want to fall in love and I have anymore. Hey, just tell you this, Jason, that's exactly what's going to happen. It's amazing. Yeah, just so open that bottle. It is gorgeous and. It's still to this day probably my favorite single barrel that we've released thus far is that that particular one. Purple prairie, purple corn, and a purple heartwood barrel. <laughs> Sounds well, good. while you're tasting that uh, new boss hog, I'm gonna taste some of that. It's our buddy Larry. How's it going, Larry? You guys haven't checked out Larry's bar up there in Union, Kentucky. The bourbon and brew. We opened ours because we liked it. And we wanted to drink it. Yeah, Larry's tried this one too. In fact, because uh, Bobby, because Bobby got a bottle. Pretty much all the channels have a bottle of this, so it's delicious. It's quite good. Yes. Yeah. Because we, before the show, we uh, we compared it to the hazmat, but we'll talk about that afterward. So, what do you think of the uh, pig? It's not the fruit. It's a fruit bomb. Yeah, it's it's totally different than anything else I've ever had from them. It reminds me of pie almost. Pie. Okay. It's 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 very interesting, but yeah, the, since that teak like finish is so different, it's like rhubarb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For us, you know, it's 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 that wood that you know use on sailing ships. So it re- really picked that up on there big time. That teak, I don't know, that might be like really interesting in Texas. I like that. I might be a fun, might be at least we can get small barrel or something, something fun to play with. You never know. The pie is also great. Oh, they do want to know about this. I guess we talked about this earlier today. Yeah. Travis wants to know what the second rendition of the YouTube barrel pick. Um, the second rendition is actually because there was so little of it left and you guys liked that so much, we ended up taking it and blending it in with some of uh, other older older bourbons that we had. And it's being aged in Armagnac cast. So I believe it will be coming out in May, but we'll have quite a bit more um, just so we, again, because otherwise we would have had like 30 bottles, which is yeah, that's not a so lot great. of people get really frustrated with me into <laughs> a 30 yeah. bottle release. Um, so it's yeah, it's been aging in Armagnac cask with some other bourbon. So it'll be released under a name called Apotheosis. So mm, that should get, be fun. All right. So we got Brian Olson says, enjoying the last few drops of the tri-barrel Solstice Harbinger tonight. 
Thank uh, you very much, Brennan. Appreciate it. We're gonna be cracking one of those. Yeah, let's do that next. I haven't tried that yet. There. Oh my goodness, that's so good. All right, so let's talk about the trove. I know we have a bottle of that. We're trying to try it. Not the tribe. Yep, there it is. There's the tri barrels here. Solstice. All right, so tell us what the tri barrel solstice is. So normally our anniversary bottling is called Icor. Um, this year, because Harbinger got fancy and got too big for his britches, we decided <laughs> to do a special special release of, of Harbinger and also wanting to have more than just one barrel's worth for, for people. Cause again, that's I'm, the thing I try to limit the most is trying to get whiskey to people. I think it's probably the, yeah. my biggest struggle right now. And so Jonathan came up with the idea kind of mid year to start doing what we call tri barrel blends, which are taking three really fun, different or special barrels and blending them together. So we wanted to do something that was showcasing really old iron root to kind of I guess harbinger is supposed to be kind of a peek into the future. And that's exactly what this is Ooh. to show what, what old really mature iron root tastes like. So this is a blend of three barrels, uh, three um, bourbon. Uh, one was a hundred percent yellow corn. That was barrel number five that we did. Wow. One was, that's that nice. was 74 months old. We had wow. a purple corn and European oak that we did that was 64 months old and also a bloody butcher corn in European oak um, that was 54 months old. Wow. And so that's what got blended into this guy right here. So it is by far the oldest blend that we've ever done. Again, obviously we've got 70, you know, over six year old whiskey in it. It's delicious. Um, and it's, mm, that's spectacular. It's dark, dark, dark oak on this guy. It's um, just like old iron root. That's, that's really good. Whoa. And then that proof spike. Very good. And then All that right. proof spike hits you hard. Whew. All right. Jason says, I know corn is your jam, but any thoughts on a solid wheat or since there's not, because there's so much wheat in Texas and Oklahoma close by. Thanks, Jason. Funny you should mention that, Jason. So the next tri barrel that's going to be coming out in June will actually be a blend of weeded bourbons that we made. Mm, okay. And so the two we did about a little over three years ago, we did kind of a year of exploring wheat. So we made a wheat whiskey and then we did wow. some weeded bourbons um, just to kind of test out different wheat varietals and styles. And there's two, two types that we really fell in love with. One was a caramel malted wheat. So it's this roasty, really rich, really bright wheat. And then one made with farro, which is an ancient wheat that's it's einkorn, emmer, and um, it's spelt. It's like that's no, kind of okay, cool. One day, Nick, one day. That sounds like a lot of fun. Let's um, check that out. That sounds so, great. yeah, the next tri barrel will be a blend of weeded bourbons. Very three cool. Three weeded bourbons. Nick wants to know, when you come to Utah? Oh, probably yeah. 2023 is probably what we're looking at right now. Okay. Um, we're sorry, Nick. You'll, you'll have to find a friend to send, to send you some olive oil. I think it's your best choice at this point. Blame the guys in Arizona. They're drinking... An ungodly amount of fire root right now. Oh, so I guess you had to drive. To, I don't know how far you are from the Arizona border. Maybe drive to Arizona and get some. I want to say Utah. I mean, yeah, we, basically any state that has total line. Again, typically the broker sending stuff to right now. So, I guess Travis did not like the wheat whiskey from Balcones. <laughs> I weeded bourbon. I I, will, I like it. I'll tell you, our weeded bourbon is very different than Balcones one, and oh, I, I I actually enjoy the Balcones. I one like as well. the weeded wheat. Yeah, I but, like Balcones one. Yeah, the our wheat is very very different. Yeah, you guys, none of you guys, but in general, you guys stuff yeah, is totally right, right. different. There's, they're not remotely the same. We didn't. Yeah, plus you're what two hours apart, three hours apart, and. Regionally, yeah, and it just, even it's just, just different. Re it's just wheat, climate change. Wheat different. selection for them is very different too. Yeah, that's a selection. good point. Yeah, it's totally different. Exactly, totally different things. They they basically had nothing except for you learn to distill there. That's about it. So yeah, the next next batch of Harbinger guys will be out very beginning. That's when we should be refilling the whole country. Hopefully, we should be getting more in April. <laughs> Patrick, you're funny. We always need more iron as a house, but get enough to bring back to Texas. 
Hey, Drum Yankee, how's it going? Oh, God, that's funny. That's just This yeah, is really good. good. So how many bottles did you end up getting out of a tri-barrel blend like this? Um, and we've got 320 okay, so bottles of them. So, so it wasn't, I mean, obviously the six-year-old was a little bit shorter than the other ones, yeah. but the, um, but yeah, so we were over 300 bottles on it. I think the apotheosis when we release it will probably be between four to 500 bottles. So, and then the next tri-barrel should be, I'm going to guess between 350 and 400 would be my guess on the next one. All right, so hey, I'm no porter, but please push that bottle for the way from your so in front of your guests. <laughs> Thanks, Liberty Not License. All right. I don't think that's a good idea, Jason. <laughs> Ooh, on another day, another day. I'm pretty sure if Will wants to live past today, that'll be a poor just decision. a tiny pour. I just got a little tiny pour. Please sell to Iowa. We love you long time. No, Travis. No. <laughs> Working on it, man. Working on it. That's uh, the <sighs> again. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's towards the end of next year. Would, would be Iowa. Again, I'm getting yelled at enough in Texas, right? Now, I need more whiskey. Well, I know. That's what I'm trying to hear on a daily and basis. Yeah. And it's one of those things. If 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 we had known, we would have. It. Yeah, three. It's kind of crazy to think that it, when we were making the whiskey that's coming out now was whiskey that we had just started releasing whiskey. Whenever we made yeah. whiskey, we're releasing now. Or so. A, a lot. Of, a lot has changed even since since the the whiskey that we're releasing now. We've done a lot of a lot of changes to what we're doing. See. Even Sarah says you, you best not do that. <laughs> yeah, no, I would not. No, no, no. That'd be a that'd be a bad idea. Uh, actually, I, Cohen, um, I may kill. I may kill one of these guys. The uh, the Balcones Cash and Rum is freaking amazing. So I would pick that up. Fifty five is actually a really good price for that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, I see like eighty. Yeah. yeah, that's a great price. I would buy that. It's it's fantastic rum. If you're into rum, you'll really like it. And apparently, the mischievous Smith in the drop says Kansas also needs some higher. So apparently, this, all the other states are just bitching. Please give us higher rate. So, <laughs> that's the conclusion to come down to. I thought we were getting. I thought we were getting stuff in the Kansas City, and then um, oh, Missouri, not yeah. Kansas City, Kansas. So uh, where can I? We're almost there. I actually, actually, two years ago, had a conversation with the distributor in Kansas, and. They elected not to carry us, which is the only reason you guys don't have it right now. Otherwise. So go yell at those people instead that they're dumb. It's their fault. I did. I did have to tell someone no uh, the other day, though. We just had a, out of luck. The, we had a distributor out of Russia was call, called and was wanting product, and I was like, ah, I'm, there's a lot of places I got to get whiskey to before I start sending stuff to Russia. Russia wanted it. No. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, I was like, it's telling me, I'll send you one bottle. <laughs> it wouldn't be Just worth so it. Just so I can say distributed. So, oh, you're, so you're internationally distributed. We sent one bottle to Russia. <laughs> you just said that one, the the, uh, the stuff over to England. Yeah, no, we, and we, uh, there's a couple single barrels going over to England. This no, okay, cool. Very cool. There are outside of America friends and family. Very nice. I guess Jason said he's so close to you, but he gets so bored driving to Oklahoma in order to get to you. <laughs> Can't say I really blame you. It is a boring drive. <laughs> he's been begging it to get before the awards and everything in Iowa, before Utah. Sorry, not sorry. Besides, Mormons won't appreciate it properly anyway. <laughs> Travis. <laughs> Well, I don't think you have to worry about the Mormons drinking it. Pretty confident that's not going to be really be an issue. I'll tell you what, Travis. Iron Root for a Kalashnikov. That's a good but, trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would take an AK-47 for a bottle of Iron Root. That's a damn good trade. You never know. You never. <laughs> uh, Travis, though, so next time, uh, again, that you want to make the drive, you let me know, and I'll, I'll make sure we got something special for you when you come down. Wow, your first text was Iron? That's pretty cool, Brian. Yeah, that's uh, Kilko. If you guys have... Check out Kilko's channel. Go ahead, guys. He's not the whiskey tuber as well. You know, I do. This is probably my favorite names in all of whiskey tube. It's got to be Mr. Whiskey Shits. <laughs> Iron Vegas. Cheers. Thanks very much. It is indeed. Um, again, total wine, 
typically there's, I think there's a handful of other stores out in Nevada that have it, but for sure the total lines will carry it. When, when I have product that goes to, to Nevada, they typically buy a lot of it. Are you getting a bottling line? Yeah, we are getting a bottling line. Wow. It's supposed to be in in November. Oh, no. And it's still not here yet. So <sighs> that yeah. sucks. Wow, that's fancy you're moving up so, in the world. Though. So for nice. For, for those of you who are wondering why I don't have as much whiskey out right now, it's because I still don't have my bottling line. That's the main <laughs> reason. Yeah, it's a good reason. And there's Whiskey Samurai. Also, Whiskey Samurai has a channel. If you guys want to check out Whiskey Samurai. Ooh, that would be fun. An Iron Root High West combo. That would be a very mm, interesting should, combination. Actually, you, should, you should check should that out. To him. You should. That would be, be fun. That would be really fun. All the crazy stuff those guys do with you guys stuff. Go visit their distillery. That's gorgeous distillery they have out there, too. I haven't been to that one. I know it's supposed to be really pretty. I haven't been there. That could be fun. We can play with High West later. <laughs> We've got lots of High West here we can play with. <laughs> I got... Uh, I mean, they're inspirational to me. I know... Uh, I fell in love. They had a 14 year old light whiskey that they brought and had a number of oh, years yeah. ago. So yeah. we, we brought in some some old light whiskey just because I was like, I wonder what this would do in High Texas. Proof alcohol one? Oh, yeah. We got some obtainium in the other room we can play with. It's 139. Right. We'll play with that I'm a little bit. That. <laughs> Had some fun with that. That's courtesy of Travis. Midwinter's Night Hubris. Ooh. That could be very good. Sounds like a great plan, Jay. Thank you very much. I'm not opposed. There's some winner sitting right over there. So well, let's let's pour some. Well, the, the the people want the hubris apparently. Let's let's pour some hubris. All right. That was uh, let's start out with the low proof hubris, and then we'll work our way up to the, the big big boy. Which one's the low one? The one seventeen. Okay. I don't know if he has that one. I think we just do. He's I think I just got that. Actually, he had a sample of hubris. I think. Does he? Mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you have? You have a hubris, Will? Which one is that? Hold on, I look at my pictures. Oh, he just has a hazmat. Yeah. Yeah, right, that's what well, I thought. You know, I guess that means we have to go straight to the hazmat then. Darn. Well, we can. You know, we'll have to make. We can open. I, mean, I don't care. No, no, no. Let's just do the hazmat. Do the hazmat. We'll come back to this one. Let's do the hazmat real quick. What did I do with it? Oh yeah, we drank some of it earlier. Any rye in the future, Eric? Uh, the rye whiskey is currently. Just shot touch under two years old, so Rendezvous you ginger. will see rye whiskey from us. Um, it will not be this year, it may be the next year or the year after. Again, it's anything that's not corn based, typically, we we uh we play around with, and it's one of those things that we just kind of hold on to until Jonathan is exceedingly happy with what, what we're doing. Not that the corn is not, but rye takes it takes a little bit longer to mature. Um, Especially with pot still rye, because pot still rye, really? I think one of the big th- misconceptions on 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 especially like craft Ooh. spirits and stuff, when you're dealing with pot stills, pot stills concentrate base grain characters a lot more than column do, does. So that's why, like, generally after like four years or so, grain character is going to leave quite a bit out of a column still distillate, where it never really is going to leave a pot still distillate. I mean, it's why by law, single malt. Has it from Scotland has to be done pot still. Same thing in cognac with the grape. Uh, you're going to maintain a lot more of that base character. And so for us, it's finding that balance of that kind of rye bread notes and kind of crazier rye notes with uh, um, with the kind of barrel notes. And that's going to be kind of when we finally release that. Now, that is the most difficult thing for me to get Jonathan to, to distill. Mm-hmm. Just because mashing it is such a pain in the butt, and it usually takes about a year or so for him to forget how much of a pain yeah, in the butt it was. That's right. Before we'll do it again, because um, you it, rye likes to form what we call they form little tiny balls, and in the in the mash tank. And if you do, don't fish those out and break them up, then they you don't actually get the heat penetration into the grain, so you don't kill all the bacteria. Ooh. So you can end up with infected, infected mashes. So, Ooh. which gives it kind of weird and funky kind of craziness. So, That's if you've ever had bad. a craft whiskey that or craft rye that you're like, "What the heck is this?" Generally, that's because some sort of rye ball issue um, when you get some of those bacterial infections. Um, so you have to literally fish it out in the middle of mashing it to break up the the, the rye balls. Will it make you sick? Those rye balls if they're infected or no, 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 no the alcohol. 
<laughs> kills now, it all. Alcohol kills kills it, but it just doesn't taste very good. Or it just tastes funky. It just tastes funky. It's not again, it's one of those things that any I think the biggest misconception is with faults is a lot of people find my well if it has, has faults in it, then it's bad. And it's sometimes faults in the right proportions can turn in some really cool and awesome flavors because that's the only way you can technically mm. get those flavors. Little tiny ball signs cause infections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It happens. It does happen. All right. So can you, if he has tasted the rye through the funk stage of aging, all the sources have told me that the rye goes through a funky stage at some point during aging. That is very, very true. Okay. And that's especially for us, I would say starting kind of at 18 months. And then um, I'd say it's starting to dissipate right now for us. And so that's why again, it's still going to be a while before we release any rye. Okay. To try some of that next time we're up there. Hey, look, you can get it for fifty-one dollars for the for the Balcones Rum. Awesome, that's even good. better. That's a Pretty great good. price. I never seen it that cheap ever. So, other crazy <clears throat> things: the Celts and McKinney and Irish. Oh Club yeah, that one's good. Talked us into doing a traditional traditional pot still whiskey. So we ended up a few years ago doing a. It's sixty percent unmalted Texas barley, forty percent Irish malt. And then it was triple distilled, and then we were raging it in used cast. So, first couple of years we'll do in ex bourbon, and then we'll probably switch to sherry for the last mm. two years. Um, and how old is it now? 18? It's, it's 22, 22 now? months. Now. 22 months now. So, it's almost ready to move to sherry cask, I think. I know we've tried it a couple of times. It was really early, maybe three or four months in, and then whenever we were up there last mm. time, we tried it. So, it, and it changed a lot from those couple of times. Well, be Holy crap, I like high proof whiskey, but this is hot. <laughs> Man. Hazmat. Oh, yeah. Not shy whiskey. All right. So, no, this explodes on your palate. It starts evaporating in your mouth. It starts it evaporating. Oh, yeah. You should compare it to the alcohol vapor as it expands to 98.6 degrees. Mm -hmm. Insanity. Let's see. Can you let Arbor know when I stopped by to pick up my reserve barrel that Marsha was super helpful in helping me buy three more bottles and two classes? <laughs> <laughs> She'll do that. That's you know, the, it is her job. Yeah. Marsha, Marsha's good at that. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, at least she showed you a good time when she did that. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, I appreciate you, your support on that. That's, that's pretty awesome. Oh, All right. Let's see. When are we releasing that Irish style whiskey? I guess what another couple of years. Um, I think the Celt is probably more impatient than we are. So mm -hmm. they they will probably, my guess, either this fall, winter, or next spring is when they will get their barrel. And then probably the following fall after that, we'll start releasing mm -hmm. it. We we've liked it so much that we've now doing it regularly every okay. year. So we cool. did four barrels the first year, and then this last year we did twelve. Um and then Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, we did 8 and then 12, and we'll continue to nice. do it quite a bit. So it, it'll be coming out. It'll continue getting older. Um, we'll be playing around with it a bunch on what type of bourbon cask are we aging it in, and also playing around with different share wow. types, whether it's PA, PX or, um, you know, Oloroso or whatever we end up doing with that it. Sounds, either way, it'll be fun. It, it doesn't really matter. If they'll both be good. It doesn't, it'll be – hmm. The real question is how long will it last at the restaurant? That's the real question. I'm guessing not long. I have no idea. That's and most McKenny folks drink a lot of booze. That's for sure. Still haven't been to that restaurant because every time I come out there, I'm like going straight to go see you. It's like I'm never stopping at McKinney. I'm like, well, I'll stop McKinney and go out of That's stupid. So, you know, one of these days, we'll, we'll have to go over there. 100. Madeira. You guys have Madeira. Bro? Oh, we, we got Madeira barrels. Okay, so, yeah, there's there's whiskey aging Madeira casks. Um. I think we've got – I don't think we have any Irish in any Madeira. We do have – Jonathan put the most recent batch of Irish. One of the barrels went into a Sauternes cask from – So mm. that should be fun because that will be full maturation in, in a Sauternes cask. Let's see. Charles wants to know is max out productionally. So how many barrels on average are you making now? Uh, so we, we were making like 160 to 200 barrels a year. Right now we're – we're going to be producing around 350 this year. Damn. Now we can make more than that, but it just has to do with barrel room space. And mm -hmm. right now, I'm saving my pennies to get the other barrel warehouse finished. So it's we're in a weird where trying to finish up the 
the tasting room to give us room for the bottling line, and then we'll be finishing up the other barrel room. So our current barrel room can only handle around eight between eight to nine hundred barrels. The other one should be able to handle about fifteen hundred. Once we get there, then we'll be able to kind of crank it out full speed. There you go. There's our buddy the whiskey dick. Hey, Bill's gone. He says, it's my boy Robert. What's up, Bill? All right. There's Mike. How's it going? Huh. What about McKinney and Iron Root? <laughs> um, uh, we do, there are a lot of restaurants that support us pretty pretty well in McKinney. So if you're there, the Kelp always, again, they have their private barrel that hopefully will be releasing sometime later this year, beginning of next year. The local Yokel always has. They always do evolution casks, and then so they've always done it a hundred proof, but this time they've asked us to do a cast strength one. So they should have a cast strength uh, one at local yoga pretty soon. And Jason's offering his three car garage as well for you for barrel space. Let's do it. <laughs> it'll, it'll be Oklahoma edition. <laughs> I, I have a feeling those are going to be leaky barrels. I'm just, just going to throw that out there. Slightly good, leaky barrels. He's checking for the quality. It's fine. <laughs> It's kind of like uh, when Fitzgerald went around and checked the barrel. Same problem. You know those that I, I've heard the angel share in Texas is a little ruthless, but some, in some areas it's a little bit higher than others. Yeah, just what it involves in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma is just not the case. Yeah, we do not want us with a barrel outside in the deep freaking snow. It sounds horrible. I yeah. mean, it'd be all right. The problem is that you would. Bust out your your range. Oh, yeah. That'd be great. Now you have whiskey leaking everywhere. Super. I think that's my favorite story from the guy from Jefferson's. The very first batch, they started out with like 30 something barrels on the boat. And by the time they got back, they only had two barrels left because the Damn. rings had rusted out on the other ones and they had lost it all. Oh, God. So, so these are now stainless steel. Now, well, now they put them, they don't actually put them on like the deck of a boat where they can get splashed with salt water. Ah, now they put okay. them in containers and ship them okay. around. So you the don't devil share here. <laughs> the ginger share. The ginger share. <laughs> oh God. That's too funny. All right. Well, did you pour the hazmat for yourself? I did I pour some okay. more. I guess I'm gonna open up this one too. So what's so what's different than this iron this uh so that's the standard release. Uh you've got a distillery bottle, so the distillery bottles are unfiltered versus mm -hmm. the ones that hit the market were filtered because right when I open that shit, I, don't I don't know if you guys can see this yeah, or not. Oh yeah. Hey, well make me full and, screen, yeah. please. Can't really see them well. I don't know if you can see it or not, but yeah, a little bit. A little floaty. There's little floaties in there and char yeah. and all good stuff. They're for beautiful things. Fast. So yeah, a lot of times with the distillery bottlings, we do like unfiltered or doing something a little bit different. So they're not quite the exact same ones that are the in market releases. Of course, you get stuff with char and floaties in it. They tend to the market tends to be not as not as happy with you. Whereas See, people at the distillery, they want the most the least filtered thing I can possibly give them. Yeah, so. it's kind of like, uh, was it the, uh, what the hell was with the char? Oh, Black Adam. Black Adam. That's a nice pop. A little flavor nuggets. In. Yeah, I like that. Flavor yeah. nuggets. <laughs> Mr. Armstrong, I like that. Get up, yeah, I guess yeah. it's good work. <laughs> Let's see what this tastes like. Yes, exactly. Want all the bottle char. It means it means it hasn't been disrupted by a damn filter. Oh, I do like your dragon on here. That's cool. Yeah. That new this year? The dragon? Yeah, that's the that's the symbol for Huber. So you'll notice ah. all, the, all the bottles have their own symbol. So you guys can see this. There's a dragon. Isn't that cool? So where's the where's the esoteric? Esoteric's got a phone too. You can see. It's got the all seeing eye on esoteric. Oh, uh, okay. That's cool. So every yeah, here's the eye. So we've got the eye on that one. We okay. will be having uh, full new branding though, so kind new of starting mid year looking so thing. We're bringing back the metal art on all the bottles, so get ready. That's cool. Because Lord knows we need more fiddly bits in our lives. Oh, yeah, clearly. Yeah. What happened to the uh to the to the shape of the bottle? So the shape changed due to because those bottles were made in China, and when COVID hit, we were just about mm. out of ordering bottles, and the glass factory shut down. And when we finally talked to him and kind of 
April or May of last year. They told us it'd be 18 months before we could order oh. them again. So we decided to go in a different direction. Heard that. That's going to be a problem. Like, oh, good news is we can get you some bad news is you can't only whiskey time remotely soon. Super. Prometheus. I think it, I'm trying to think of what's on the Prometheus. It's a, it's a flint. Some sort of it's a flame. That's Got it. It's somewhere over. I can go dig it out if you want. You have a round bottle or flat no? One? The old flat yeah, one. The flat, on the flat one. one have it. Yeah, that's all I have is the old flat one. It looks like there's hitters at a La Quinta party. That's pretty much what it looks like right now. It looks like a La Quinta party in here. <laughs> yeah, it is a shame because it's yeah. a cool bottle, but hey, it is what it is. Better to have, I'd rather have whiskey than not have a than have to wait another you know eighteen months for more whiskey. That would suck. Yeah. My bank appreciates that too. So pretty confident yeah. you're Yeah, you're gonna have to bottle that. <laughs> like yeah. we need to be paid. By the way, probably the funniest reaction you can have pitching a new business idea to a bank is telling them that you want to make something and not sell it for four years. Right. <laughs> the worst the worst business model. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, Icarus has a wings around the star. Um uh, mm. Promethean's got the star and the flame, just because obviously Promethean's the one who stole fire from the yeah. gods and gave it to man. This is true. Like Travis says, Matt is all house is always looking like the looking to bar. This is valid. That's what it looks like every day here. I think there's three times the amount of whiskey than the first time I showed up here, Matt. That's probably mm -hmm. true. Tommy, it's probably a true statement because what was shit? Was it 18? Mm -hmm. yeah, it was 18. Shit, you remember three years now? Shit. <laughs> Guess crazy. You've doubled. You've you've at least doubled in size, possibly yeah. tripled in size, in the in the two years that our channel has been a channel. True, true, true. Hey, you know we we have a nice donation room. We get a lot of borrowed stuff. We get a lot of cool stuff. So, and we're always up for more because hopefully yes, soon after I can get a damn building to call me back. We have some really awesome news for you guys. But until that time, I can't announce it because they're stupid. No. But hopefully soon. I'm gonna harass those bastards till they freaking answer my phone calls. And my I usually email. find that's the best way to do things. Mm-hmm. Let's harass them until Just they call freaking them constantly. answer. Hey assholes. See the part I don't understand is like I give you money, you give me a space. I don't understand why this is a difficult concept. And rent last time I checked, not in a great position right now. As far as I know, commercial real estate is not doing well. Probably why they're not. So they just want to leave it empty? Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, um, that makes no sense. So, any chance we're doing a barrel pick and it meant how you look at drinking at La Quinta? Oh, that's true. Um, well, we kind of the YouTube pick. That kind of was the pick. I mean, <laughs> sure, at some point in the future, when we probably do the um, the barrel, the uh, the boot camp, there'll be that'll be a pick then. Right, because then we'll actually distill what we put in a barrel, and then we'll wait, you know, four years for it, and then that'll be our barrel. Yeah. So it'll be a while, but yes. Yeah. The the choir of angels sing. That's right, Captain. That's exactly right. They do. They sing every time they're here. I heard wrench barrel. The old Chad mod pick. <laughs> <laughs> it requires you to all come down to Texas to get it. That would yeah. be required. You, you do have to come to the distillery. Has, Bill, has Bill not got his YouTube pick yet? It falls over there. Oh, geez. He'll get it. Well, he wants. He needs more. He needs more stuff for his wheel of doom. So I told him I had to fix some stuff for the wheel of doom first. So you know he'll get it. It's fine. Patience. Patience is a virtue that is. It's called COVID. You'll you be patient. It's fine. He'll live. I promise. He wants the stuff that's coming for the for the uh, wheel of doom as well. It's fine. Don't worry, Bill. This is on your wheel of doom. It'll be fine. I don't know if it's doom or. A that's that's a pretty fantastic thing to be. I was gonna say that's not a uh, in, for his wheel of doom. There's no doubt. He's gonna send me something. That'll be amazing. <laughs> Is that a challenge? A challenge for what, Captain? So, to, you guys are gonna harass some, some building places. Absolutely, that's a challenge. We'll harass them. <laughs> this is this is the answer I get every time I ask Matt about Patreon too. That's right. Someday. Someday. <laughs> Busy man. I got shit going on. We'll get there. It's all good. Is it will do fifty percent Malort samples? Oh God, no! Oh, that shit's horrible. I can't do. I can't do Malort. So I think bad. Should, do, should start sending them a bunch of uh, 
some of the crazier European stuff that's super uh, super licorice focused. Oh, fennel, some fennel based spirits. Oh yeah, Ooh. there's all sorts of fun things you could do. You ever had? Use a lot of different grappa. Ooh. Yeah, we could do that, some really. For me, crazy I like stuff. grappa. So that's. Um, yeah, we like grappa. I like, I like the grappa you have. That stuff was great. <laughs> what have, was the? Uh, Oh, aging, what was the Brazilian um, liqueur we reviewed not very long ago? That was really funky on the nose, but tasted like new make on the palate. Matt, what? liqueur. Oh, liqueur series. Uh, Chicago. Chicago. Sh- uh, yeah, Chicago. That one. It's not really Cachaca. Yeah, that. It's the Brazilian. Um, Cachaca is like yeah. It's it's um, like a rum kind of, but it's not actually rum. They use it for caipirinhas and yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah. It's the sugar cane based yeah. one. Yeah, exactly. There's some barrel aged versions that are really killer. That's what we heard. That's what we we're reading up. That so there's some really good barrel aged. Hey, so I found out in that box that we got donated by my sister in law. We have the the Akai berry one in there too, which I didn't even know she donated that. So yeah, she gave she gives like she gives a case of liqueurs to review. So yeah, little known. Little known thing, Cachaca is actually one of the most consumed spirits in the world. So we found That's out, like we read, they only export like two yeah, percent to we, Germany, and we get like the worst one. Yeah, we don't get the stuff they get. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, I, that's we, what we heard that it's like it's like how is this spirit we've never make, heard of that they drink insane amounts of? Bill but, wants me to drink Malora. Let's do it. Oh God, it's somewhere it's like right there. Oh. It's disgusting. You, it's disgusting. Bill wants you to drink. Where are you seeing that? Make Robert drink Malort. All right. There, there, there. He's, he's going to do it. Gross. Kashisha. Kashisha. I'm an alcohol trash can. I can drink it on anything. Oh, I'm sure you're fine. We, we both drink anything. It's fine. I just don't like that one. I'll drink most things. That's just not my preference. That one's just, it's so bitter. It's, that's the, it's the bitterness I don't care for. He's Bill's proud of you, by the way, so you got that. Since I'm getting more and more into the bitter things, I'll have to go back to my lord at some point. I'm just not ready for it. Yet. No, I like to torture people with that. Oh, man. I'm all out, so I need another bottle, Travis. By the way, because Tuttle gave us that bottle, but I'm almost out. There is. Oh, I'll, I'll give you mine, Matt. No, okay, because I need to torture people. No. I'll, I'll, pour, I'll pour most of mine in yours, and I'll keep a little bit over here. Well, great, but I do. I tell you what, no, no, that is. I think that is way overblown. How much people don't like that? Oh, William will join you. Would join Robert <laughs> Thanks, Travis. I don't have enough of this hazmat. Put that down. Give that to me. Sarah said I had to save her some, so I I, I don't want to. I'm going back for seconds, everybody. It really does. That would be such a great shirt. It'll be pretty funny, Robert. Got, <laughs> oh my gosh, you totally got to sell that to the story. I'm hilarious. an alcohol trash can. <laughs> oh, you saw the left bill? You should do that. That's a good plan. Mm. Hey, now put it, now screw it back on. Now you guys should, you should, you guys should really dive into the Amaro's. That I think it'll be fun to I, see Matt I, drink Amaro. I have an Amaro over there. I have a, an I, Amaro. No. I have at least one, maybe two. I know. I, I know where one is. A William, little. I can't believe you haven't gotten him to do it. it I have lots of negro. You guys are doing all the liqueurs. I mean, come I on. know. Hmm. I I'm not in charge of any of those things. I'm in charge of of editing the videos and making sure the edits are done on time. That's right. And trying to learn about editing because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So his job is to edit. That's it. That's his job. His job is to edit and drink and drink things I make him drink that he doesn't like. He's just pleased yes. about making them. He probably liked the Amaro because he likes the Campari and the Aperol. I like the Aperol, but right. Campari is too bitter. Yeah, Campari is too bitter for me. Oh, oh, see, I, I liked I liked the Campari. At that, if they if you think that's too bitter, my no, God, I'm good. man, I'm good. I don't I don't like super bitter. I uh, I really good the Aperol was quite tasty. That slight sweetness to it, uh, along with that nice bitter, I I actually quite enjoyed that one. 
You should party with Robert. He's an amazing guy. Yeah, man. I mean, you get into some of the Fernets. All the, uh, yeah, that's, that's what Sam was telling us about is the Fernets, and I haven't had any of those either. You would, again, if you think this is too bitter, yeah, you're, you're not going to enjoy those. Super. <laughs> so, we'll have a, Robert, we'll have you on, and we'll have a stream about those. Yeah. So we'll I, I, we'll I, focus I, on those. Okay. Oscar um, the Grouse the drinking bottle with a trash can. There you go. That'd be a great shirt. That'd be funny as shit. I love it. Oh god, that would be hilarious and dangerous at the same time. Yeah, I think because it's all I think the first Lamar actually tried was actually from Wisconsin last year up in Door County. He tried some of them. It wasn't bad. It was, you know, I've had way worse things in my life. But that's weird. This one, the Montenegro one is weird as shit. This is not my favorite tomorrow. It's weird. You had that one? Yeah. Oh well, yeah. I don't really care for that one. It's just weird. All right, Robert, what was the Armagnac in the, like, three seven five balls I believe it started with an L that you let me try? I've been craving that flavor lately. Thanks, Tim. Um, that was uh, in the three seven five in the small bar. That would have been a DeRose. No, Swami. One of the older DeRoses. So <laughs> um, you can find vintage DeRose. There's some really, really fun vintage DeRoses from the – even the 90s are some really, really great ones. Again, the 60s are some of the best Army X ever created. But anything, again, anything over 20 years old, you're going to be pretty, pretty well set mm. when it comes to Army X. In fact, actually, I what I would look for or just search online and see if you can order in is the 20, 20 year assemblage by DeRose. For the money, generally it's right around between eighty to ninety bucks for twenty-year-old Armagnac, and it is absolutely killer. So, I'm probably ruining my ability to get supply of it, but uh, this is a poor decision. <laughs> I will, I will say, hands down, it's one of the best buys in brandy on the market right now. Hmm. Okay, cool. And see, Josh says, "Beware of parting with licorice." This is true. And Robert doesn't just come to do his own events; he comes to other events here just to hang out. So, I know it's true. I like drinking whiskey. Exactly. It's a good choice. Oh, yeah. Oh, this uh, is, no, not not drunk, Swami. And oh, by the way, Swami renamed his channel to Two Wheels Down. He's on a motorcycle channel now. So you guys want, if you guys like motorcycles, check out Swami's new channel. I didn't know that was Swami. Yeah, that's Swami. Oh, live baby exploration. We, we do like that name as well. It's a good it's a good fun one. All right. Let's see here. What else should we, what else you want to drink? You want, you, want some, you want something else in general? Or you want more of your own stuff? I mean, I always get high on my own supply, but you know, <laughs> man, I, again, of, of the ones you tasted tonight, uh, William, what was your favorite? This, uh, this might be this one. The hazmat's really good, but I compared the hazmat to our Whiskey Crusaders pick, mm -hmm. uh, or the, the YouTube pick, and it's just, it's kind of stupid how good that one is. Um, uh, I like that tri barrel a lot. That tri barrel so, one, honestly, is is probably so interesting. Yeah, like that one. That one probably has the most complexity, and it's probably my favorite as far as flavors go. I would yeah. like to put a big way to freaking go on the Saints Alley. That one's very, very tasty. Um, I I kind of want to know what levels of MGP are you putting in that blend. Um. Although you probably shouldn't tell me that. Um, Not here. It, it's it's really, really good. Um, and it's got a really unique flavor. It's had for about a year or so. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. It's one of those things What my favorite thing to do is look at MGP aged in different parts of the country. And just yeah. kind of like and yeah. talking to those guys, how long they're keeping it on site. Just because even, even four or five months in Texas – the color difference is so crazy than what you get in other places, but for real. Um, but yeah, no, we 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 brought in some you know between four to six year old MGP and you're aging it on site uh, for for the Saint Sally project. All right, so our buddy Sam Sanctum from Spirits, still red iron root. Cheers, y'all. Thanks, Sam. We'll we'll have to correct that problem for you, Sam. One day we, we can we can solve that problem. Oops, sorry, Matt. Next one. All right, this is from Brandon Wilson. This has been holding a while. The crack in this we. Are a G root single barrel. We are pick. Groot. Oh, we are Groot. Oh, I we are Groot. I'll try to read correctly. 
Barrel Hick Bourbon Bros. All right, very cool. That's a fun, that, Brandon. That's a really fun release. Uh, I that 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 day was a lot of fun with them. But yeah, that that's a really really special pick on that one. I like the one. What's the one? Oh, the Huckleberry pick. I like that pick a lot. The, the green, green one. Yeah, that one's really crazy. cool. Yeah. Let's see. Any bring up any interesting questions? Any good barrel picks names that stick out to you? Me. Um, the weird Groot. That one was really fun. The I'm your Huckleberry was a fun one just because Doc Holliday. Uh, Doc Holliday had a practice in Denison, so that was a really fun one. It's just so funny. A Huckleberry. It's a fruit. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. There's been some. I, I tell you what we've had I've seen everything from like super raunchy names to uh, to just you know just normal everyday ones but I think probably those are the two that stick out most in my mind right now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really buy a lot of barrel picks in general. It's not not just tater stickers. Unfortunately, you don't see a lot of those, or they're just you know run of the mill names. Nothing's the best, and a woman down was pretty great. The red told us about woman down ever. So my buddy Chris, he uh, they went out to Wild Turkey, and uh, I think they went through eighteen barrels that day to choose. Well, instead of you know when you usually go to barrel pick, you dump it. Yeah, she didn't dump any of them. She drank all of them. She's gonna end up oh. very bad. So she ended up as a rag doll. Literally, there's a video of her being carried by her husband out to in the parking lot. So there's like a rag doll over his shoulder. So they named the, uh, the barrel after her as woman down. <laughs> so that is an amazing pick. In honor of you, I'm gonna I'm doing a suicide blend of iron root, and we're finishing it in the Malort glass. Ooh, ooh, I'm see how that ooh. Goes. Oh, you're a brave man. That sounds sounds awful. It sounds like a good way to ruin some iron. Root. This one's for you, Bill. <laughs> you know what? I, I guess when you live in the iron root world, uh, anything outside of that world is going to be kind of fun. Oh, Lord. I think that's. <laughs> For me, that's what these blending projects have really been done is that you get to play around in stuff that's outside your typical flavor profile. I think we should do that since we've got, yeah, we like some blends. I think that sounds like some fun. Let's grab some, I'm going to grab some High West and stuff that you talked about that earlier. Yeah. We're going to make blends, guys. So we want some suggestions for blends. I think that sounds like fun. It's going to be an interesting night, isn't it? All right. Midwinters. Oh, Jesus. Throw oh, that in there. What else do you want? Or some names and stuff. I'm sure we can grab just about anything. What hmm. do you want to blend with? What might it be entertaining with? Get Maybe that. Uh, do some. Uh, it be fun with some scotch, too. You never mm. know. Well, well, grab some Alconis rye. Ooh, some chocolate. That's definitely yeah. some chocolate. You know what? I'm gonna grab this. This will be entertaining. Man, you ever had Manitani out of Pennsylvania? I have not. This will be fun for you. Manitani is a four grain. See, this, they talk like this is a little story of him. Manitani. Show me again. Manitani out of Pennsylvania. So what's in here? It's an American whiskey. It's 80% two row malt, 9% wheat, 9%. An oat and two percent rye. It's fifty-three gallon new American oat number number four char. So this should be a really interesting one. Yeah. I think this will be very entertaining. So we need some suggestions of things you guys think we should blend together, and we'll see if they're any good or not. We just don't know yet. Yeah, I think this for, for what you like and what I like. This will I think you're going to enjoy that. Nika from the barrel. We could do that. I can, get, I can grab one of those. Chattanooga 111. I think I don't think I have a Chattanooga rye. I don't think I actually no, have the 111. Uh, the, the high malt bourbon. Yeah. You know what? I would grab, would be fun if you had the high west, uh, the light whiskey. I don't actually. Oh. It's not here. I have the Obtanium though. Okay. Yeah. Grab that. Grab that. that. Grab that and play around with that with Nika because you're looking at creating your own blended. Again, essentially what's a blended scotch, but you're dealing with significantly better grain whiskey than what they typically use for. for so going with the old, uh, the old the old blended malt, or I guess blended scotch style. But 
when you use high quality grain whiskey, you can get some really cool stuff. I mean, obviously there's a few people that are really well known for doing high quality uh, blended scotches, but it's always fun to play with on your own. There's, again, I think you get the, like the Northern British grain whiskey. That's once that hits like 25 years oh, old. Oh, it's good it's stuff. It's super crazy good. You ever had that Laird of Fentry out of Canada? No. I'll eat that. Say. Good Lord. All right. I'm only going to be able to taste a couple of these. Otherwise, driving home will be an issue. He doesn't so. have to drive home. So I can drink them because I live here. <laughs> I don't have to go anywhere. So it's perfect. Rum finish. All right. So let's see. We got some. Nika from the barrel. We should mix it with. Which iron root product do you think would go best with Nika with the barrel? So here's what I would do. I do Nika. Okay. Um, I do a little bit more Nika to it. Yeah, more than that. Okay. A little bit more Nika. I do a splash of. Let's do a splash of the tri tri barrel. Okay. And then hit it with the light whiskey. All right. Let's see what happens here. Any experimentation yeah. with tri yeah. levels with the barrels? Uh, yeah, we actually have char everywhere from one all the way up to four uh, that we play with. Um, then we also play with toast profiles below uh, on the low char stuff. We have probably six or seven different toast profiles we played with below that. Nice. It's amazing. It's Our preference is for a much lower level char. Um, yeah, see, Scott's what I'm talking about too. <laughs> Texas blends. Mm, yeah, we, we can make pretty much only any Texas blend. Yeah, except that Robert has to drive home, so, you know. Exactly. I mean, that doesn't mean I have to taste it. But. He can smell it. He can try it. I think with the rest, we can put the rest in the infinity barrel. It doesn't, doesn't really make any difference. Um, on the Texas side, yeah. I mean, that's weird. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Things don't always turn out right. And may need to sit here and marry for a long or two. You know how that goes, too. Mm -hmm. So who knows? That's a good question. Cinnamon is popping on this bad boy. Yeah. Needs to marry a little bit longer, I think. We'll see what happens. Everyone knows the best Pappy blend is 20th year in Diet Coke. I agree, Josh. This is totally true. Brad proved it was true. <laughs> Part lemon juice. No, oh, geez. Yikes. It's missing something. Yeah, you need some you need some wine cask on that. Or cherry something. Mm -hmm. Fruit is not apparent on it. This might work. Or finished. Good work. Um, but yeah, no, talking about Texas blends, uh, that was been probably the spent probably the last year just working and playing around with blending different Texas whiskeys together it is amazing. The variety of flavors that we have within the Texas whiskey community right now, just because everyone does things so differently that you really get this crazy breadth of, of whiskey. That's definitely better. Still thinking. Something like light whiskey. No, it needs more. It needs a heavier. Oh, I know we need to add to it. The strawberry one. quick. Yes, I agree. I think that would be no. <laughs> great. No, I think we should add take some... up that fruit profile. Oh, I... okay, all right. I think this will help. So I think we should add some balcony twenty-one year portwood. It needs it needs more fruit. See, the moral of the story is Pete fixes everything. That's that's really my well, that's, philosophy. The, the other solution yeah. is we'll just add Pete to this. If, if worse comes to worse, we'll just add some Ardbeg to it. Problem solved. And that may be the solution at this point. But I want to see if enough of this fruit does anything to it. Because who else doesn't pour, you know, $250 whiskey in here? Why not, right? Hatch Distillery. What is that? Hatch is out of um, Wisconsin, Door County. Ooh. That improved. 
This is your here's your, here's your, here's That improved it for sure. That was the right call. Oh, Madeira's in here. Oh, that's uh, Josh Madeira from uh, Austin. Oh, I didn't see him. Where am I supposed to see his name? Oh, hello, Josh. How's it going? Haven't seen you in a long time. Yes, still Austin makes great whiskey too. Absolutely. And um, I'm about to bring in about. I got Ten barrels right of their stuff. I'm pretty excited. Speaking of still Austin, I I might need some more, Josh. I'm I'm running kind of low here on mine. Yeah. What do you think? Austin? Same here, but I just that's about ten barrels, so I think yeah, I think, I think you're good. good shape for a little bit. And I'm killing off a Promethean from a there couple of years back. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. It's well, old... Of course, Sarah makes a quinoa whiskey. It's 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 definitely interesting. It's funky and nutty and it's it's just weird. <laughs> it's it's but it's weird in a, it's it's weird in a good way. I like like malted rye, like you get some funk on malted rye. Mm -hmm. Like stawning out of Denmark, you never had any of their stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, that shit's weird as fuck. I'll have to, to try that. Yeah. I'll grab some hair. But yeah, no, everybody in the in the chat, if you are in Texas and you have not tried Stell Austin, do your favor, do yourself a favor, run to Total Wine or Specs and grab a bottle of the musician. It is not only is it super reasonably priced for for craft whiskey, yeah, it's like forty five bucks, but it is yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you're not going to be wrong, and we, and then it's not just us saying being from Texas, as I know we're slightly biased being from Texas, but we have people try it in other states, and actually we're really big fans of it. So it, it's really good whiskey. A bacon strip? I don't have any bacon tonight, actually, unfortunately. Otherwise, that would be great. I did have some barbecue last Ooh, night cherry from uh, <laughs> Cherry Coke. I have some downstairs. I don't really think we want to do that, but we can. Hi. Whatever. Did you wake up, little girl? So the real question is, how much peat should we add to this? <laughs> how much peat? What do you think, Oogdal, since it's Sherry cast? Yeah, I mean, add all the peat. Add all the peat. <laughs> He's like, just to... Just, just make it all Pete. It's fine. That it'll make it better. Pete solves everything, as we say. That Ardbeg tent is the ultimate fixer and mixer. That's right. When all else fails, add some Ardbeg. Yeah, I think it'll all be better than adding a no. What the hell is the Oogdal? That's why. Oh, because love it. Oogdal. 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 That's right. Hey Shane, how's it going? All right, let's see here. Holy shit! Oh, it's the first time. Violet, that was disgusting. <laughs> Thanks, Violet. Thanks for the uh, background noise. That was beautiful. I had to try the eleven two Octomore the other day. Oh, yeah. well. What was it? Really good. What did we try? Eleven. All right, eleven. Man, I, I got one more in me, and then I have to. I have to start the stills at 3 a.m., so mm. I'm going to drive home. With <laughs> that would be best. You that have to be start best. the stills at 3 a.m.? Mm-hmm. Oh, they just get up, basically. Yeah, just get them. The uh, spirit run generally lasts around 18 hours oh, or so. Geez. So Wow. So do you, like, heat up and go to bed, or you got to stay awake? Like, right? Oh, like, no, you don't You don't let the stills run. You have, you have to stay awake. Okay. Yeah, it's usually... Letting alcohol free flowing and not having it's a bad, it's a bad choice. Bad it's, you don't need Chernobyl happening in the whiskey world. Ask how that worked out in some of the places mm -hmm. in Kentucky with the fire. Um, ben mentioned two brewers at a, uh, from the Yukon. It was an amazing Canadian single malt, and mm -hmm. I have to agree wholeheartedly. Two brewers is good stuff. I agree. Doing some killer stuff. <laughs> Ooh, no, not that one. One. He doesn't live that close, guys. I'll have to. Uber to the distillery too, if I do that. <laughs> yeah, that's not so great. Yeah. yeah. Operating high pressure boilers while intoxicated is usually not a wise decision. This is a terrible idea. That's freaking delicious now. <laughs> we fixed it. It's perfect now. Tell you, Pete fixes everything. It does. And it didn't add very much to it, just, just enough. To cut some of the little 
sharpness out of it. Now it's perfect. This is the iron root blending philosophy. Ed, Pete, you're good to go. Don't worry about it. Exactly. It's a, it's a solid, solid idea. And that is the pussycat. Yeah, she finally woke up. She's been sleeping uh, this whole time. So she's missed out on most of the rounds of bacon. So she got up and joined me over here. So I figured I'd give her some. No, I don't blame her. Might as well. Just about an iron if I want to have her and get half of a job problem solved. Oh, that'll work out well. Eh. Although one time yeah. she did work as she did sell wine pops for my buddy that owns a winery. He had her out there selling wine pops. That was entertaining. She, she, she might not want to tell the TABC that. <laughs> she wasn't technically selling them. She was advertising them. Sorry. Okay. Correct. Right, correct. She wasn't she wasn't selling anything. She was advertising outside in front of somebody to come buy them. That's probably the better terminology. I'm sure that they also and, frown on minors selling out or advertising alcohol with minors. You yeah. they also frown upon, but I get you. I get you. It's, valid. it's technically okay. But I was there with her. It's fine. For all intents and purposes of uh, YouTube, Violet is uh, over 21 and can legally drink if she wants to. <laughs> oh. Do you want to try, try the Manitani? No, that's okay. just take a splash. Let's see what you think. I'm, okay. I'm interested to see what you think of those two. Okay. Yeah, so that one comes from first Columbia. Um, that one there from was it Ak Akos something? It's this crazy long ass name. I can't pronounce it. It starts with an O. It's like 13 letters long. Ben's right. calling you an ugly doggy. Both of you guys, oh, you're not ugly doggy. You are cute puppers. Well, it's like 60. Totally, Mark. Totally. Google dog. That's right. That's right. She's older than all of us. That's right. Uh, so, again, not talking Iron Root. Guys, this year, so far, we're, we're now two months in. What non-major brand has really surprised you this year so far? Non-major brand. Jesus. <laughs> See you, kid. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. What did we try that was like a new? Oh, you know what? It was in, I tried this the other day. I don't. I wouldn't really call it. I know it's not a. I know they don't make anything. It's, that it's technically you know MGP. I tried some Bull Run. Mm -hmm. So finishing a um, Pinot Noir cast, fantastic. Killer. Thirteen year. That was really good. Uh, but that's it. But they don't make it. I'm trying to think of smaller distillers we've tried this Just, year. Uh, that that Sazenac, the Sasquatch Snatch. Oh, Sazenac? Oh, my God. Do you get Sazenac? If you have, I'll send some home with you. Mm -mm. Is okay. that the... Is that, me, that Sam, the... Sam Huey? Yeah. Oh, dude, it's fucking spectacular. Yeah. That might be the best blended scotch I've ever had. It's oh. fucking phenomenal. Even better than Compass? It's right up there with, like... like Right up there with, like, this is not a luxury whiskey. It's that fucking good. Oh, it. come on. I haven't had that one yet. You're going to put that next to... This is not... Yes, I think it's that good. I like the fruitiness of it so much on there. They did such a good job. I love that whiskey. I think it sounds like it's time for a blind, uh, blind sample challenge. Mm. At some you point. know, that's what I'm saying. I need to come over there and just label some glassware for you one night. Yeah. I think you. I think you'd have to find another bottle of this is not a luxury whiskey for that because that's Excuse a you. a very difficult bottle to find. That one came from Kansas. Dally Wayne. No, I have to buy one. Ooh, that sounds good. I think I only have one of those. It's a that's an Alexander Murray. That's a forty percent. I haven't opened it ever though, so I have no idea if it's. I'm, I'm sure it's good. I just haven't opened it. You know, there's lots of things I've never opened just because never got around to it. Hello, Christmas and Crestline. How's it going? Good to see you. We are, we're talking about some of the kind of craft distilleries that have impressed us this year. Are you bad? We haven't had a whole lot of. We haven't really had a whole lot this year of new craft. I'm just trying to think. Oh, you know what's interesting? That was good. Well, it's not craft per se, but it's new new branding. Is the uh, Glen Geary from uh, Luck Loman? Mm -hmm. That's their new stuff. It's really freaking good. I really like that. We're having them on Midwest, sometime. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about Middle West. I have tried Middle West. That's some interesting stuff. Is that these guys? Yeah, yeah, those guys. Oh, all right. There's a there's a there's a there's a single malt, a twelve year, and then there's the blend. The blend was okay. The two single malts are pretty good. I buy the blend to go in my blends. 
Hmm. Andy mentioned Starlight. Yeah, that's another one, guys. If you have not, it's super underrated distillery. Yeah, uh, I need to talk. I need to call Starlight and get them because Eric sent us a bottle of Starlight and it was good. Well, we've tried it. We haven't reviewed it yet. We need to get. In fact, we probably should put that on the thing to review soon. So you need to go to them because it's acres of orchards and again the restaurant on site is super killer. Um, again, they, that was actually the one of the very first distillers I ever visited when we were starting out was Starlight. Oh, okay. little, they had this little tiny German still, but the family is on this huge vineyard mm. orchards. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous out there. So, Man. again, take a take a trip out to Indiana and go go visit them. Of course, they're right next to Louisville. I mean, yeah, let's try that. Good never, to share never in yeah. my house. Never. It's her- no, Indiana in your house. No, <laughs> I, it's absolutely gorgeous though. So anybody out there? Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite places. Yeah, these guys. Yeah, definitely. You guys need to come down there and check out Iron Root. You'll have a good time. That's for sure. Me Mark. and Sarah are are in the same camp with you. Uh, me, we haven't made it out there yet. We, we you're, you're you are on our nope. list of places sure. we absolutely want to be, but just haven't made it out there yet. Oops. So, what do you think? <laughs> what is what do you reckon is the first iron for someone to try? That's a great question, Ooh. Shane. That's so that's a very difficult question because it tends to be kind of where you are in your whiskey journey. If you're a person that is starting to get into kind of higher proof stuff and is really enjoying the kind of the richer, heavier, heavier style whiskeys, I think for me the best entry point for someone at that, at that kind of stage of their whiskey cycle would be Harbinger 115. Mm -hmm. If you are wanting just super kind of in your face, intense stuff, um, then again, if you can grab one of our cast strength single barrels or even hubris is going to be a little bit more in your face than, than the 115 Harbinger. Um, If you're still working your way up to kind of the crazy high proof stuff, then Either esoteric or Promethean is kind of where I would suggest starting. Okay. Yeah, we got this new view. Gonna, whoa, shit. Went crazy. Okay. We have our new first time here. We got Paul here. Thanks for being here. Appreciate that. Yeah. If you live in San Antonio, come back up to here. Yes, I don't know. be much closer than San Antonio. That's for damn sure. What's up, Paul? How's it going, man? But yes, thanks for coming in here. Appreciate it. All right. But yeah, Shane. I think pretty much. Let's be honest. Any Iron Root product, if you find it, you should just buy it. You'll be you'll be good. <laughs> I think that's the simple solution because it, because it is like you said, it sells out so quick in a lot of places. Don't if you see it, don't think about it because it may not be there tomorrow. Is the issue at this point until your production can be until you know, we, we catch up? Yeah, yeah, that is an unfortunate place where we're at right now. If I had to choose, I guess turkey bacon. But fuck off. Uh, yeah. Vegan bacon, dude. Jeremy Griffith, what state are you in? Is the oh yeah, that's a good question. You know, there's a great story about uh bacon. So our buddy Adam, he is a uh, they are vegetarians, and him and his wife were going out to a bed and breakfast out in Weatherford, which is west of here. For anybody that doesn't know, it, there it is. It's like an hour west of here. And so they asked them if they had any, any vegan or vegetarian bacon. They mean like that turkey bacon? That's what the lady told them on the phone. So I was like, correct. She's like, no, not quite like that. So we we are in Illinois just barely. Again, outside of Texas, the distribution is limited. But we are technically in 40 different states. The best bet, again, if you're looking for something, is either going to be at Total Wine because our the broker that handles our stuff outside of Texas does send quite a bit to total wines. Uh, there are a number of online retailers like a spirits will carry stuff. Um, mm. they can check out, uh, uh, we do some independent bottlings that will come up. So if you guys watch like lost lantern, they'll mm, out of Vermont. Right. They can ship nationwide. There's a, they've got a, they've got a bourbon cask. I don't know when they're going to release it. Mike's I think would probably be this year. Um, we are in the military exchange, but for the Navy, um, oh, so really? if you okay. are near any of the Navy bases, we do have, they get Harbinger, Promethean, and Harbinger XC. And every once in a while, they get Hubris as well. Um, so they do, the military does do it, but it's only the Navy at the moment. You can get the rest of the AFIs exchanges then. 
Oh, we could get in the class six here down at Carswell. Okay. Which would be good since it's close by. <laughs> or maybe Dallas. That close, so whatever. Kansas, we're still a little ways away. Um, last time we tried to get in there, they turned us down. So mm. we'll hopefully try. Right. Yeah, you're in deep. The closest I can get to you guys in Kansas, we, we do sell stuff in Missouri. Um, so you some can sometimes see it in on the Kansas Missouri side of Kansas City. Yeah, if you get in the Navy, you should get into the rest of the service. That'll be that'll be great for you guys. I mean, because I know like at Carswell here, which is Navy. Which, well, where are you at? Because that's a Naval Joint Reserve Base. Are you at Carswell? Yeah, if it's in Navy Wars, base, it's in it. Technically, it is, but it's all for all all the branches are there. Technically, Carswell's. Air Force. I know Corpus. Well, it, use, it's not technically cars once. Yeah. Naval Air Force Joint Exchange Base now. Okay. It has been for the last 20 years. I know the Corpus Christi base gets it. I don't know about that one. Yeah, because Corpus is Navy. I don't know. Next time I go out to the base, which we go pretty often, I'll, I'll look. I've never seen it there prior. Uh, if not, I will ask the people that work there say, when the fuck are we getting it? I think so, that, that's the solution to that. And it's just get the other like you know people that are, that are there on a regular basis to harass them until they get it. I like that plan. It's usually the best method on that. You just get a bunch of list of guys going there and freaking yell at them and say, when the hell are we getting Iron Root? Iowa, Iowa is on the list. Again, the, I think kind of uh, Midwest is kind of the next kind of place we're going to target to try to get it, kind of fill in some of the blanks where we have up there. For sure. Um, Iowa, again, uh, Iowa and Kansas are pretty high on the list for entering. As I said, it says darn Arizona and keep drinking everything. So, shit. I'm, okay, so just overall, how much of it goes to Texas compared to the rest of the country, just in general? We're about sixty-five percent to Texas. I don't think it was something like that. Okay, Texas. that's kind of what I figured. It's like because Texas keeps drinking. That's your real yeah, problem. Insane. <laughs> yeah. So we do, and again, it's one of those things that I. And we try to keep stuff at the distillery as well. So when people make the journey, we tend to have we'll have at least something that isn't available in market at the distillery. Yes, Steve, that one. That's the that's the class six I shop at all all the time anyway. So is that one, Steve? Yeah, I would they they may or may not have it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen it there, but I can I can ask the next time I'm out there. It so we are currently in East Tennessee. Um, mm. not West Tennessee yet. That's again, it, <laughs> retailer. It's all about the retailers at the end of the day. Um, who's willing, who's willing to order stuff. And that's, it, it is available and it is, it just depends on whether the retailer will order it or not. Oh, can you share any deals with the esoteric? I'm sipping on the E20 at the moment. E20. So E20 was the third release of esoteric. We only released it every couple of years. Uh, esoteric is Solera that we run um, that's kind of use our experimental whiskey. So the most recent one's got stuff that's six years old. Um, but the youngest stuff in it's going to be 42 months. So it's one of the oldest of the like lower proof blends that we do. So it's definitely going to have a little bit more oak to it. Um, you can see that just by the color. Um, but yeah, it's uh, got caramel malted wheat, a purple prairie barley, and a green Oaxacan corn in, in the in the blend currently. Yes, we have one. We'll make another one someday. They're, they're starting good. to do tri barrel blends as well. Uh, they're delicious. Yeah, they do them, and yes. they're great. See, and so Christian of Grestline, this is one of the buddies with the Scotch's dummies. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, he, like he says, you need to pick his name, so he has a reason to come to Texas and shop at liquor stores. <laughs> what's your name? <laughs> Christmas. Or what's your email, I guess, is the better question. Yeah, that's the better question. Christmas. If you win, I'll give you a hard time. Send me an email, Christmas on Crestline, and I'll, I'll send it to Robert so we can see if you win or not, just for hilarious sake. That'll be at whiskeycrusaders3 at gmail.com. It'll be very entertaining either way. Uh, oh, yeah. On the Illinois question, someone asked about Illinois. We are, um, but it's in southern Illinois, ironically, is where it's where it's near closer, really? to, closer to St. Louis. We have some, some stores that carry stuff. I figured it'd be like in Chicago. You would think. That's but, bizarre. Okay. Again, as I said, I don't manage the distribution right. it's, outside it's nothing you can, Yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. It is what it is in every state. Yeah, it's just the weirdness but, that there is. Yeah, that's 
So and when you're a young distiller, sometimes you sign contracts and again, mm. you have to suffer through the consequences of that decision over the next few years, which is, is what it is. How long is your contract through? It's, it was four years and it's about, we're about two years through it. Okay. So, so it might have been two years then. So that's why 2023 makes more sense. <laughs> we'll have better control in the states that we're in. Mm. Anything else uh, that you need to tell us uh, before we get off for the evening? Um, not I, again. We've got some fun stuff. Again, we got a, a blend of Texas whiskeys coming out. I think probably April. Um, so pretty pretty darn soon. It's gonna be really fun. Called Grayson. Uh, we've got um again we've got Saints Alley coming out. So if you're a person who's not as big on the Texas funk and the kind of craziest of tech craziness of Texas flavor profile. Or use the, and those products would kind of use the Texas whiskey kind of round out some Midwestern whiskeys, which is really fun. Um, and then the tri barrels, but we have apotheosis coming out this year, which is gonna be some Armagnac and Pinot de Chirant finished bourbons, which are gonna be really, really fun. So it's gonna be nearly every six weeks, we probably have something cool coming out and fun. So if you got a chance to stop by the distillery, definitely swing by. We'll, we'll have something cool coming out. Oh, I guess they won the one for Scotch Trooper Iron Root Tour. Yeah, well, oh. then you guys get we'll, – we'll have some really fun when you come then because you get – there's some really special special stuff coming for that Perfect. Tour. See, there you go, then. That'll be perfect. All right. We get to taste the barrels with you. Perfect. That's And let me tell you, that's a really good time. Yes, yeah, we're doing a Robin theme to uh, release. Oh, very cool. I, I suggest that you stay at the hotel down the street at Uber. It's a – very wise decision and eat a lot of food. And actually, they get a hotel night. Oh, even better. Then perfect. They're great. Uber from the hotel. <laughs> it's a good idea. So, anyways, right. thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. In four hours, I'll be making more whiskey. So, so there we go. Everybody. Matt, real quickly, what do we got coming out this week? All right, we got an old tailor from the 1970s coming out tomorrow compared to one from the 90s and from the late 2000s. And then we have, let's see, Yamasaki that's Japanese only this week. So fun times. All right, cheers, everybody. Appreciate it. It's been an awesome night here with Robert. Thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys all next week here for uh, Smoked Whiskey's Blinds from Bourbon Battalion. It's going to be a great time next week. All right, Ooh. cheers. Bye. Cheers, everybody. Cheers.